Hi, I'm Alan Smith. You know, so often I hear people say, Alan, I'd love to have a beautiful garden, but I really don't have much space. Well, as a garden designer, I find that some of the smallest spaces can make the most charming gardens. So in today's show, I thought we'd go around the country and have a look at small space gardens. Now, we're not going to limit ourselves to suburbia. We'll also visit the big city of Chicago, where the mayor talks to us about the new rooftop gardens at City Hall, part of the Windy City's green initiatives. We'll go out into the country where a friend of mine chose to have a small space garden, even though she's surrounded by acres and acres. I'll show you how I helped turn a California condo into an inviting garden oasis. And I invite you to copy these planters that I made to give the condo's deck some privacy from passing visitors. And speaking of containers, I'll share some tips perfect for patios and terraces. And we'll take a tour of this small garden for some great ideas you can use at home. So stick around. Let's face it, we're all affected by our environment. And some man-made environments, such as a city, can be some of the harshest. Some cities like Chicago are actually taking innovative gardens and using them to help reduce the negative environmental effects of heat and pollution. This rooftop garden is located on top of Chicago's City Hall, and it's the pet project of Mayor Richard Daly. Now, the mayor is pretty humble when it comes to taking credit for being the mastermind behind many of Chicago's green initiatives, so I turn to the mayor's right-hand man when it comes to the environment, Commissioner Bill Abel, to tell me more. We've got so many black tar roofs in cities and so many asphalt surfaces that we made cities hotter. By making them hotter, we've also increased air pollution. Mayor Daly has really kind of rolled up his sleeves and tried to figure out how local cities can do something about that air quality problem at the same time they beautify the city. So City Hall Roof is his idea and one of a number of projects going on throughout the city of Chicago to reduce what's called the urban heat island. That means that cities are too dark, too hot, they create these heat islands and by planting things, by using more light colors, you can actually reduce temperatures and increase comfort and improve the environment in cities. By putting this rooftop garden on top of the roof, we'll be able to cut energy costs in City Hall, both cooling in the summer and heating in the winter by over $4,000 a year. Uh, and we're gonna be able to make this roof last at least twice as long because the soil on top of it protects the underlying roof. Absolutely, and all of the tenants around here will be able to enjoy this patch of green. Yeah, it's amazing. You've got entire, you know, entire neighborhoods or cities up there looking down on roofs throughout the city and it's a really a great place to create some green space. Tell me about the inspiration for this idea. How'd this come about? Uh, Mayor Daly uh, was the reason we're doing this. He went to Europe. We have an active sister cities program uh, and he came back from Hamburg uh, having found out that it is common practice throughout Europe to have roof gardens and in fact to have roof gardens as parts of municipal building and zoning code. I saw Hamburg and they had a number of buildings and had some wild grass, you know, and hang, overhanging. I said, gee, that's a great idea. We have a lot of flat roofs in Chicago. Uh, so I came back and I said, here, and, and let's start looking at this. And I love uh, 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 gardening in Chicago, you know, where flowers, trees, fountains, all that, making part of Chicago's life, the environment. I said, what wasted space we have up here? I'm knocked out by so much of what I see here in Chicago, from the Botanic Garden, it's a world-class facility, to the plantings down on Michigan Avenue. Yeah, when I first started that, uh, people were opposed to me. They said, oh, you're going to change the tenor of uh, the, the street. Uh, uh, merchants were concerned and all that. And all of a sudden now you see more and more people saying, hey, I'm going to do it in front of my business. I'm, I'm going to, you know, it, it, it's, it's like a fever catching on. As you look at the, the, the uh, beautiful landscape of Chicago, you, you don't realize 
when you're downtown, all these flat roofs and what it can be. And that's why, yes. that's why a lot I look, of square footage. Right. And you think about what effect it has on global warming and air quality. You know, right here in a city like ours, to me, that is my goal is to have all these real estate people understand uh, that you can affect the environment on your roof as much as inside your building. For more information on how you can become a greener citizen, just check out my website. That's pallensmith.com. Nestled in a seaside neighborhood is the garden of Kathy Henney. Now, Kathy's garden is an excellent example of how you can get creative in a small space and work around existing features like trees. Well, Kathy, I can see what the garden has been designed around. It's this beautiful coastal live oak. Yes, we're really lucky to have a lot of uh, oak trees in Carmel. Do you keep the limbs pruned up to create that canopy? Yes. So by pruning it, you uh, create a vista through the windows and at the same time you allow more sun into the garden. Mm -hmm. People in our guest room upstairs say it's like waking up in a tree house. I bet. And nothing says a welcome more than a rose over an arbor. That's what we think. What a great gate. Now this section of the garden is, has the pinks and the purples and the whites, so it's a little bit more lively, especially with the dahlia. I like the way you've used not only pinks, but you've used pinks that are blue, what I call blue pinks. Yes. Rather than getting into the warmer pinks, which would be an orange, would have some apricot. Exactly. Yeah. And, and lots of things going on here, hydrangea, dahlia, impatience. I, I like the path. It's, it's very intimate. It brings you right up to the front. Yeah, it's kind of meandering, so you can take your time, right. go sit on the bench if you want to. A landscape painter told me once, in nature there are no straight lines. Yes. And uh, I think that that's a good lesson to remember. I really like the way you've used the same materials in the path that you used over here in the patio and with this wonderful wall that creates this enclave. The circular feeling is supposed to make you want to walk out of the house and draw you into the onto the patio. Well, I think it works. And for a tiny little yard, it, it uh, I think it makes it look a lot bigger. Big ideas for a small space. Right. You know, there's nothing any more soothing than the sound of water. I agree. Yeah, this must be a real pleasure to come out here and just sit and listen to it. Couldn't envision this space without a, a little fountain of some sort. Yeah, and they've just they've become so affordable now. It's the sort of thing anybody can add to their to their garden. Kathy, thank you so much for taking the time to show me this beautiful garden. I mean, you've proven that you can take a small space and do some spectacular things. Well, thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure for me. Still ahead, a charming New England style garden in the midst of acres and acres, and a California condo gets a makeover next. As a garden designer, I get really excited about the potential small space gardens have to offer. For instance, in this small garden that I created several years ago, it's made up of several garden rooms. So I'd like to share with you some of the ideas that I use in creating these small areas of enclosure that have their own charm and intimacy. We'll start with screening. Across the back of this garden, I used a series of Italian cypress. Now rather than completely screening the view, I thought it would be more interesting to create a staccato rhythm with these tall columnar elements. When I design any garden space, the first things I look at are the views. And if the view needs to be screened, this is the first order of business. Now, it doesn't have to be a solid screen. As you can see here, you can look through the cypress and through the fronds of the Australian tree ferns. But the effect is one of privacy and intimacy. Of course, one of the great challenges of gardening in such a small space is that you don't have a lot of space. So you have to get creative. One of the things that I like to do is garden on the vertical and look for ways to garden on the walls of buildings or masonry walls that might define the garden or even fences and trellises. It's a great way to get flowers up and out of the way, providing more room to use the space in a variety of ways. Another point you'll want to consider when designing a garden space, whether it's large or small, is the style. How do you want it to look and feel? Well, in this small space, I wanted to create the feeling of an English cottage garden, California style. Some of the plants that I use to achieve this look are hydrangeas and Australian tree ferns. In combination, the contrast is stunning. 
as well as roses growing on the walls. Among perennials, I used lavender, lily of the Nile, foxglove, campanulas, and I even threw in some annuals for a splash of color in the way of impatience and sweet alyssum. When creating a garden room like this, you can't forget about the floor, but in small space gardens, turf really doesn't make a lot of sense. Who wants to have to mow a tiny little patch of lawn? So here, I used two types of materials for the flooring. One of the materials I used is a ceramic tile that takes you from the parking court to the front door. In the garden itself, I chose large flagstones in irregular shapes and interplanted them with ground covers such as baby tears. Of course, creating a sense of enclosure in a small space like this where you can actually plant directly in the soil is easy to do. But what about if you've got an area that you want to enclose that's a deck or a patio that's already in place? I've got some ideas I think you'll want to see. In a space like this, the challenge is how do you have greenery and create a sense of enclosure when you can't plant directly in the soil? Well, on this deck, I've resorted to using containers all the way around, both for visual interest and for establishing a sense of enclosure. You see, these planter boxes along the edge of the deck help define this garden room. These planter boxes are a simple design that anyone can create. Let me show you how we put them together. Wooden boxes can be beautiful, whether you paint them or let them weather like we're going to with these, but they can have a tendency to rot. That's why we're lining the insides of these with a plastic waterproofing liner that can be formed to the shape of the inside of the container. This product was actually designed for waterproofing concrete, but it works great with wood. It has an adhesive on one side to hold it securely in place. This adhesive automatically makes the seams of this liner watertight. Good drainage is critical in container gardening, so we've elevated the boxes with a few 2x2 two two boards attached to the bottom. And we're drilling 1-inch drain holes every couple of feet. And to keep the excess water from running out and staining the deck, we're installing a piece of pipe that will run through and down below the deck. When it comes to container gardening, or any other form of gardening for that matter, the soil is the key to success. And it may even be more important here because you see your plants are almost on little islands. It just makes sense that the larger the container you use, the more at home your plants will feel. The more soil that's in there, the more moisture it will retain, and that'll cut down on the amount of watering you have to do. When it comes to soil for containers, you don't want to fall into the trap of thinking you can just go in the backyard and dig up some soil. You see, this is generally heavy and it doesn't drain well. I prefer to use pre-blended mixes in bags. These are easier to work with, and there's no weed seed in them. These blends are designed to be lighter. You see, the coarse organic material in perlite and vermiculite create air spaces, and peat moss and other forms of humus help retain moisture. And if you ever try to install and support a window box, you'll be thankful for this lightweight mix. Now this is just about ready for planting. When you garden in containers, you'll discover that you have to be a little more attentive to feeding. You see, frequent watering will flush out many of the nutrients. That's why I like to have plenty of liquid fertilizer on hand. more on container gardening later in the show. Up next, a charming country garden and some ideas on creating garden paths. Some gardeners are limited by their space. Others choose to create small gardens out of convenience. That was the case for Duncan and Nancy Porter of Little Rock, Arkansas. The Porters decided that their garden should be centralized around their New England salt box home, and the results are charming. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Alan. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having us. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm oh, glad the you're here. garden just looks wonderful. Well, thank you. Living out here in the country and having lots of acreage, you could have as large a garden as you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, physically, I don't think Doug and I could handle it. <laughs> Well, no, so was, I think it, it, was it maintenance that... Uh, well, it's kind of kept me contained because by the time I get through working on this one, there's little time left. To, you couldn't possibly to even dream of thinking uh, right, of another, right. another area to garden. And if you perfect. wanted to retire the lawnmower That's, for good... That is exactly right. <laughs> you could have a, a garden like this with a 
the mulch path and lots of flowers. In fact, when I'm in town and I see these little houses with their little lawns, I think if that were mine, I'd build a picket fence all the way around it and plant flowers. No lawn. One of the lessons we can all learn by visiting a garden like Nancy's is that you don't have to have a lot of space to have something wonderful. Some of the smallest gardens are the most charming. To me, one of the most attractive ways to divide and break up space in a garden is with paths, like this one. You see, a path really should be more than just a way to get from one place to another. It's an opportunity to use some creativity, both in terms of the way it's designed and the materials used. Let's take a look at some of the possibilities. Bricks seem like a logical choice, but it's all in how you put them down. They can be simply placed on the ground where mosses and other plants can grow between them, or laid in mortar. And because of their uniform shape, they're ideal for creating patterns and bordering other materials. Stone is also a natural for paths, from the tiniest pebbles to fist-sized cobbles like these. Or they can be flat stones with irregular shapes or large pieces of cut stone for those with money to spare. Paths can tell on us like shortcuts across our lawn where the grass begins to wear, looking like a cow path. Flagstones like these can be the perfect answer for such wear and tear. When you put them down, you just want to make sure they're spaced where you have a comfortable stride and that they're settled in low enough and secure enough that they don't wobble when you walk on them or hit them with the lawnmower blade when you mow the lawn. And if you really want to get elaborate, you can cover your path with an arbor so you can enjoy your garden in the shade. When we come back, gardens for any size home. Each spring, when I begin to think of container planting, I always think of the months ahead. What's this container going to look like throughout the summer and into the fall? For this container, I want something that can take the blistering heat of summer and remain beautiful right up until the first cold nights of autumn. Now this time of year, you can find all sorts of inspiration for containers. In fact, I was inspired by some dahlias that I found in this mail order catalog. The variety I'm using is one called Zingaro. It's a medium height dahlia that only grows to about 24 inches. One of the fascinating things about dahlias is they actually grow from a tuber like this, which is not unlike a potato. In fact, dahlia tubers are actually edible. Now I'm using these in a cluster of three toward the back of the container like this. And to complement the dahlias, I'm using some other brightly colored, sun-loving plants. To grow alongside the dahlia, I've planted some of this festive colored coleus. And to cascade down the container, I'm using this sweet potato vine called Blackie, along with a verbena and this silver-leafed helichrysum. I think the thing to keep in mind in creating a container like this is to have an anchoring centerpiece like the dahlias. These will soon grow and fill this part of the container and use plants that work in the same color family. A great companion to P. Allen Smith Gardens is our website, pallensmith.com. Log on to learn more about today's topic. You'll also get hands-on gardening tips, design ideas, lessons in garden history, delicious recipes, and crafts projects that will take you from season to season, all beautifully illustrated with thousands of colorful images that will inspire your creativity. Plus, don't miss Alan's free weekly newsletter delivered straight to your inbox, all just a mouse click away at pallensmith.com. I hope in today's show you've seen that you don't have to have acres and acres of land to have a beautiful garden. Small gardens can be found in some of the most surprising places, tucked away in quiet neighborhoods, on the rooftop of buildings, or even in a simple single container. And remember, all the information in today's show can be found on my website. That's pallensmith.com. And I hope you'll visit with all of your gardening questions. I think you'll come away with some ideas that'll help transform your garden space into that special little piece of paradise for yourself. From the garden, I'm Alan Smith. Accommodations provided by Hotel Burnham, Chicago, Illinois.
In this garden I dream Of a bed of flowers Bluebirds sing Of the beauty all around us And every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile Oh, no, I can't help but smile